This is Brit Ironjaw, your field reporter, bringing you the bestest scraps this side of Gork Screen. We's got real proper scrap here today, fans, as the Crimson Fists try to stem the tide of the mighty war in a matchup what seems as old as time itself. Way back in the early days of Rogue Trader, Captain Pedro Cantor held off an assault south of the capital of Rin's world during a massive orc invasion. Steve and James do their level best to replay that classic matchup in this episode of 40k in 40 minutes, Battle at the Farm, again! Greetings 40k fans, and welcome to this classic episode of 40k in 40 minutes. Your host, JT, the voice of play on, and Space Marine Steve, Mr. Initiative James Jones, Crimson Fists, Orcs, what else have I got to say? I'm Space Marine Steve, welcome to the Play On Studio. I'm really excited to be in the studio today. Why? Because the new Space Marine Codex just came out at the time of this filming. It is still October, which means it is Space Marine-tober. Stop saying Space Marine October. It's Orctober and you know it. True to form, Steve is bringing an anvil siege force indicative of how the Crimson Fist play. I am playing my Crimson Fist today. Very appropriate to just wipe all of the orcs right off the table. He's got a captain in Gravis armor with the stoic defender enhancement, a librarian, a heavy intercessor squad, an impulsor, some aggressors with bolters, a hellblaster squad, some inceptors, an infiltrator squad, a redemptor dreadnought, and a squad of terminators. And the tech brings there to babysit my dreadnought. Damn, do I love this thing. He's big, he's shiny, and he is upset that there are orcs on the table. That Redemptor Dreadnought really poses a lot of questions that I'm not sure James has the answers for. I am bringing a fast Beast Snaga army. I'm hoping to penetrate the center of the table and take control of the objectives early and smash anything that comes to try to take them away. James has brought a Beast Boss and a Beast Boss on a Squigasaur with Headwapa's Kill Choppa, one squad of 20 Beast Snaga Boys and a squad of 10 Beast Snaga Boys, also another squad of boys. Boys, 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 that's the way to play the Orcs. He's got a truck with a wrecking ball, a squad of Gretchen, a hunter rig, and some Squig Hog Boys. Those Squig Hog Boys are a big unit and can absolutely wreck vehicles. I'm expecting them to charge hard into the Impulsor or the Dreadnought and really wreck its day. Can he take down the Dreadnought before the Dreadnought takes him down? Also, don't sleep on the Beast Boss on Squigasaur. Headwapa's Kill Choppa makes his wounds gain devastating, so he could do some serious damage to whatever he charges. Good luck, Steve. You're gonna need it. Today's mission is Dawn of War. How classic can we get? Long table edges and 24 inches apart. We're also playing Purge the Foe, another throwback. It's hold, hold more, kill, kill more, all for four points each. Today's mission special is Chilling Rain, so no additional special rules. Mr. Initiative, I've been super excited for this all day long. We haven't played each other in a long time. I think part of the issue is that uh, every time we do the league, I'm at the top and you're down in the middle. This episode is brought to you by Terrain Crate from Mantic Games. It's time to bring your sci-fi battlefields to life with Terrain Crate. Whether it's carnivorous alien jungles or ruined gothic cities, there's a wide range of immersive and affordable terrain packs to build your ideal battlefield. Super detailed scatter terrain to really make your battlefields feel immersive. There are great value packs of battlefield scatter and much, much more. Gamers love Terrain Crate because there are no sprues, just brilliantly designed, ready-to-paint scenery that is super detailed to bring your greatest battles to life. Terrain Crate is tough too, made of super durable PVC. It's designed by gamers for gaming and built to last. Just for our audience, use code PLAYON15 to save 15% off terrain and more at the link in the description, valid until March of 2024. Now back to the action. Tiger Defender. Ooh, a six. I want you to be the attacker. You deploy first. Looks like Steve's chosen to place both his Terminators and Inceptors in reserve. The Hellblasters with attached Librarian are going in the Impulsor, and the Captain is going with the Heavy Intercessors. That's going to provide a solid fire base in his back line. The big squad of Beast Snagger Boys with the Beast Boss is going inside that Hunter Rig. The Squig Hog Boys and the Knob on Smasher Squig are actually going in reserve, and the Beast Snagger Boys are going in the truck. 
I would think that James would want the Squig Hog boys to actually come in via rapid ingress turn two. It's going to be really interesting when he calls the Wah because they benefit more from charging on the Wah turn than they do any other. So I can put a unit down? 10 Garats on my home objective. Captain with all the heavy intercessors behind this piece of terrain. Ingressors. Let's get these orc boys on the table here. Pulsar, right back here. This is a truck. Infiltrators, right back here. Right not right there. This is my tech marine, right here. Both players have hidden as much as possible. It really looks like neither player wants to go first. This should make for a potentially really quick turn one, as nobody has a lot of shots. Steve does have his infiltrators four deployed on his right flank to make a play for that objective. I'm not sure if I entirely agree with that, as it does give James a potential early charge. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second? I don't care. My army swings both ways. Let's roll. Oh, sick. Looks like Steve's going to be going first. Top of turn one, and both players gain a command point. Steve has drawn engaged on all fronts and tempting target, and James has chosen the center objective for Steve to take. Engaged on all fronts and attempting target in this particular mission, this particular setup against this particular opponent and army, that's bad. Ah, <laughs> Steve, take that. The tech marine blesses the redemptor for a plus one to hit. You know what? We are gonna wah. Wah! That was really loud. There we go. James has decided to wah turn one. Interesting. That's going to force Steve to stay back and not be aggressive as James can advance and charge this turn. I think I have to wah on turn one. If he comes forward into the center of the table, I'm going to chew his forces up. I found it very valuable to have my opponent be nervous and stay back in their deployment zone on turn one. So all of my weapons are heavy. Everything has the heavy keyword now because I'm using Anvil Siege Forest. Looks like Steve is moved into position to stand and shoot on his next turn, and that's about it. Steve has decided to force James to stretch with his Wah turn, whereas James has forced Steve to stay back with the same. Interesting back and forth already. Steve's discarded engage in all fronts to gain an extra command point, and is keeping tempting target, so he'll have to try to take that center objective. Two command points to one in favor of Steve as we head into turn two. All right, so my turn. James draws his secondaries. He's got engage on all fronts and deployed teleport homers. Not great, but actually not too bad. Steve has gone to three command points and James to two as the Grots have failed to farm him a command point. That small squad of Beast Naga boys is going to deploy homers mid-board after hopping out of that transport. The Beast Boss of the Squigasaur blitzes forward. He's going to wreck something. Ooh, the Hunter Rig just kind of stutter steps. Looks like somebody dumped the clutch. Boy Squad advances. I'm thinking those infiltrators could be in serious trouble. Or shooting phase now. Incidental at best. The mortar into your heavy intercessors there. Three ups. Make them both. We will shoot the truck at them as well. It's twice. Five. Ah. I'm going to shoot the rocket into your impulsor. Nothing. So we will go into the charge. Here's what we're waiting for, folks. Charge phase. The boys and the beast boss are both in. Fight phase now. Steve spends a command point on armor of contempt, but James has chosen the beast boss to go first. He's on the wah. A grand total of six plus one attacks. He's managed to kill two infiltrators with the beast boss. Boys now into the squad. Can they pick it up? Oh boy, can they? The Impulsor fights back and kills one of the boys. James has deployed homers for three, engaged at all fronts for three. That gives him six points. And he's got eight primary for kill and kill more. 14 to zero. 
I'm on all the center objectives except one. Steve's gonna have to work to get me off of them. He didn't get rid of anything super important. I got all my big guns left. Let's just see if Mr. Initiative can handle my next shooting phase. Steve's turn two now, and the hunter rig is both a moment and tempting target is still the center objective. Steve uses his blessings of the office eye on the Redemptor to give it plus one to hit, and he's drawn bring it down as his second objective. Four points primary for Steve, up to three command points, same as James. Redemptor Dreadnought moving upfield. Those Beast Naga boys are in some serious trouble. Bolt Storm Aggressors are sneaking up on the edge here. Oh, the Inceptors, Deep Strike, danger close. Steve's decided to keep his Terminators in reserve. I'm gonna choose to kind of throw away the Inceptors here because I need this tempting target. I need to score points to keep up with them. It's also gonna create kind of like a little speed bump, sort of, hopefully keep him contained in the center of the board so I can just get like maybe one more round of shooting out of him. Yeah, we're gonna go into shooting. Impulsor now opens up out of those Orc boys and oh boy, Alberto, this could be huge. Come on, fives. Three AP nothings. Save none. Six shots from the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber. On threes, up to twos, back to threes, because I'm in uh, I'm in combat. Four hits, he's on fives again. Uh, two AP nothings. Save one. 10 shots from the Hell Blasters. The threes, one miss, so nine hits. Twos, because it's heavy and I remain stationary. I have six up in ball. Dead boys is dead. Redemptor firing into the Oath Hunter Rig now, and it takes seven wounds. And then the Tech Marine's gonna hit it with its, with its Forge Bolter, hitting on threes, re-rolling, and then on sixes. Nothing. Intercessor Squad, they are gonna target the rig. Steve is gonna spend his free battle tactic from his Gravis Captain for no threat too great. That's gonna let him re-roll fail wounds, as well as a command point on Battle Drill Recall, takes him down to two command points. He's gonna do some serious work here. So on fives, re-rolling. You didn't roll a single six. Or not, he only manages two wounds, wow. Down to seven. The Inceptors now are gonna target those Beast Naga boys. James spends a command point on hard as nails, giving them minus one to be wounded. He's down to two command points as well. Threes, uh, sixes are sustained two. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Love that. And then on fives, re-rolling. Because they're twin -linked. Five AP minus ones, two damage apiece. So five, six ups. Fail them all, five, six ups. Me too. There are two damage apiece though. Two more of these. No, okay, a kill five. No charges or fights for Steve. However, he does score a tempting target to put him up to nine points total to James's 14. Steve's kept bring it down to carry forward to the next turn. James' turn two now, he's pulled Storm Hostile Objective and Secure No Man's Land. Fantastic draws for him. The Grots give him an extra command point, puts him to four, and Steve to three. 18-9 is your score as we head into James' turn two. The kill rig has survived turn one. Now I'm gonna move it up to the middle of the table. I don't know if Steve forgot, but this thing has 21 dudes waiting inside. Steve chooses to overwatch with his Dreadnought for a command point. No hazard has failed, but only one wound to the hunter rig. My movement phase is finished. Shooting phase now. These Snagger boys are gonna fire into the Inceptors. Hit you twice, so wounds you once. Good to go. Hunter rig opens up into the Inceptors. The stick -a bomb misses the Dread, however. Regular beast Naga boys. They all hit it. And then fives. Three more ones. Cool. Fail two. Do the thump gun from the beast boss on Squigasaur into your truck. D3 shots for two. Fives. No. And now we will charge. Oh, the beast boss on Squigasaur charges the impulsor and he's in. The hunter rig slams into the inceptors. I will uh, fight with the rig first. Steve spending two command points here to heroically intervene with his Dreadnought. He rolls his charge and he fails. Oh no, he rolled a three. Oh man, that's gonna hurt. Wow, okay, so what you're saying is there's a chance. Yep. Let's see if this rig can kill you. Hunter rig now is doing some serious work and those aggressors are picked up. All right, let's go over there. 
Beast Boss on Squigasaur into your Repulsor. James spends a command point on Unbridled Carnage to have exploding hits on fives and gets eight devastating wounds with his Beast Boss. The big Chompa Squig Jaws. Squigasaur Jaws now munches the Impulsor and it explodes. Uh, so D3 uh, Mortals heading your way for one, one whole mortal. One feel no pain? Oh yeah. Four plus, baby. Hellblasters have to make an emergency disembarkation and one of the Hellblasters dies, oh no. What a huge turn for James. James has managed Kill Kill More again. That puts him at 20 primary. He secured No Man's Land and he stormed Hostile Objective, still sits at three command points and has 36 to 13, starting to become a bit of a runaway. Steve still has Bring It Down and is drawn Deploy Teleport Homers. So I've drawn Deploy Teleport Homers and I have a unit in Deep Strike. Also, Bring It Down, still very active. The Kill Rig is here and the Truck is here. He's oathing that Hunter Rig and has to kill it. That has to go down, so this is the good choice. Tech Marine does his cheerleading, makes the Redemptor better. James to four command points, Steve up to one. Yeah, I'm cool with this. Redemptor and Tech Marine move to the midboard. End of my movement phase. Oh, Terminators are dropping in the back line. I think he's going to deploy homers with him. James chooses to rapid ingress into Steve's back line. He's down to three command points, and those Squig Hog boys are in. I don't think that these Beast Snaga Hog Riders have enough oomph to take the Terminators on head to head. I'm better off to go to his back line and duplicate what he's doing to me, which is take the home objective over. Shooting phase now, and the Hellblasters chuck a grenade at the Hunter Rig, take it down to three wounds left. And then the squad of Hellblasters are all gonna then shoot at the Kill Rig, and I'm gonna overcharge all of their guns. Boy, howdy, here we go. Oh, only one of them wounds. Hazardous tests are all good. Time for the Tech Marine's grab pistol. Can he do it? Hits on twos, re-rolling. Anti-vehicle two up. Sick. AP minus one, two damage. <laughs> take two. Wait, wait. Pin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> double ones. He does! The yeah. Graf pistol does it! Just one. Does he blow up? Oh, I hope not. Oh, he does! Oh, what happened? It exploded, and James is spending a command point on arguably my favorite orc stratagem, Kareem! Here it goes! He gets to take a normal move! Boy, oh boy, we are going to Kareem now. Eat this ball of fire, Steve. Kaboom. Yeah. Oh wow, one mortal wound to the Dreadnought, but the Tech Marine takes five, and that's what he gets for killing the Hunter Rig. Heavy Intercessors lose a model as well, and out bail the 21 boys. That's 20 Beast Nagas and a Beast Boss. In your face. Hello. Oh, that me, hello. Okay, that, that did it work too well. It, that is not good, and the Kareen is bad. That's very bad. What is that? Hey, where did all these orcs come from? Truck's taking some fire now. Nine uh, twin links uh, shots. Yeah. So these are on twos because I stood still. So on sixes. Three AP minus ones so far. Twin links. Ooh, four AP minus ones. Five ups. Take three. The three D6 shots. Nine. Like these are not twin links. Two more AP minus ones. <laughs> Intercessors into there. On twos. T5, so I would be on fours, but because I stood still, threes. Five AP minus ones. Five, six ups. Make two. I believe these guys have a six up, feel no pain. I do take three, though. Old Storm Gauntlet. No twos. Nope, nothing. The Dreadnought, and the Dreadnought's gonna shoot everything into the Beast Negas. Gatling Gun on twos, because he's still blessed. Yep. Ah. Oh, yeah, this sucks. One AP nothing. Six up. There it is. Kills another one. D6 plus three. Uh, so seven, that's not twos. And then on fives, re-rolling, because it's twin linked. Three AP nothings. Save one. Sixes. Take two more dudes. D3 shots with the rock pod. A one AP one, two damage. 
Two damage? I mean, I'll try. Oh, so close. And then D6 plus four with the macroplasma, and I'm not exploding it. Uh, seven shots. Bunch of hits, feels great. This is on threes. That's six more dead dudes. I'll damage two, and it's AP three. So I'll just try for the feeling pains. Five more there. It'll be eight in total from the dread. Yeah, and another one, eight, nine total. And the Terminators are gonna perform the action, and that's gonna score Steve five for deploy homers at a turn. I'm gonna declare some charges. Aggressors into the truck on the charge, two command points. Wretched are gonna try to heroically intervene to keep the objective under his control. And he fails to charge. What is going on? Neither one of these players can make less than a six inch charge. This is nuts. Yeah. I would have wow. took the objective from you. There's no way you would have killed enough. Probably not. Yeah. You're right. Heavy intercessors into the remains of the Beast Naga boys, as there's only six of them remaining. The dread. Here we go. Unfailable totally is. I'll start over with the aggressors, so three attacks apiece. Yep. They are hitting on threes with their twin power fists. So I'm winning on fours, re-rolling because they're twin links. So four AP twos. Sixes, regardless. Got one. So six damage. That's enough. Does it blow up? Please don't, okay. Heavy intercessors fighting into the beast naga boys, thinning down that herd. And then on fives. Uh, one AP nothing, yeah. They take it. Yeah, and then the captain. Oh, captain, captain my, my captain. captain. Two attacks with the relic blade, hitting on twos. Uh, two hits, and these are on fours. Uh, so one AP minus two, two damage. Kills a guy. And then five attacks with the fist, hitting on twos. Oh, he hits on twos with the fist? Yeah, he does. Uh, so three AP minus two, two damage piece. So kill three dudes. These snagga boys just evaporate under bolter fire. It hurts. The feel no pains aren't coming. The saves aren't coming. And then the redemptor dread. Uh, redemptor fist. Five attacks. Hitting on threes. Ooh, five hits. Sick. We're going twos. Uh, four AP minus twos. Three damage piece. Well, I'm gonna roll. I mean, I gotta roll, right? Yeah. Okay. Kill. Cool. Fight back into the Heavy Intercessors. Armor of Contempt for free. Beast Nagas are doing some work, though. The Redemptor takes no damage on James's clapback. So I get five points for deploy teleport homers. And I also... Got eight points. He killed two vehicles. What a fantastic turn three for Steve. He's bringing it back. 30 to 36, only six points in it as we head to James's turn three. We got an absolute nail biter, folks. James has turned three now, and he draws Cleanse. Redrawing for a command point. He's got Defense Stronghold and Overwhelming Force. I also have to roll some Battle Shock. Over there. They pass. And then the middle unit. Pass. Steve has a command point. James has none. James scores four on primary to take him up to 40 to 30 as we head to his movement phase. James is really trying to look to clap back after an amazingly good turn three from Steve, but he's in place to do some serious work. I'm gonna have OC four here from two dudes without touching the wall. These guys have um, follow me lads. So they move an extra two inches. All right, let's shoot. Turn three shooting face. <laughs> it's orcs. This guy shoots his pistol into the dread. Yep, that's, that's about how that goes. Two pistols over there. One hit. I know. Uh, this guy's thump gun, D3. Okay, okay, three shots. Hit twice, string six. Two. It's two damage, I believe. Oh, yeah, you kill one of them. Yeah. It has blast. I believe I have one more shot. Never mind. Charge phase. Beast boss succeeds at his charge. Big Hog Boys hit the Heavy Intercessors. I don't think either of those units is long for this world. Let's fight. Fight phase now. There first. So hitting you on twos. They're damaged. One explosion. Fours. Give me eight AP1s. Four ups. It's actually good. 
Oh, fail three, they're 200 apiece. Yep. So the first guy dies, and the other heavy intercessor yep. dies as well. Just the captain remains. Squig Hog boys just wrecked that heavy intercessor squad, but the captain holds. What an absolute fridge. Now I'm gonna resolve the squig bites, uh, hitting on threes. It per worked out perfectly equal. So winning on fours again. AP one, two damage. Force. I fail two, and then he has the damage, and then clicks into his feel no pain. Two one damage hits, six ups. I fail both. So he has five wounds remaining, because he is a refrigerator. But now the character is going to fight. Uh, five attacks, hitting on twos. All hit, one explosion, one threes. Ooh, okay. Take three. So four ups. I fail, I pass one. Yep. Two damage apiece. Yep. All right, so halves to one each, and then six yep. up female pains. Make one, fail nice. one. Take damage. But under four remaining. Yep, this man's a freaking beast. Now his squig bites you. Can't kill you now. Uh, hits you both. Uh, sorry, no, hits you one, miss one, but they explodes with a six. What's his toughness? Six. It doesn't matter. I, I win you two. Two more, AP minus one, two damage. Four ups. I uh, pass one, fail one, and then it goes to one damage, six up, feel no pain, which I fail, take one, go to three. Okay. Sick. He's a champ. Lost a heavy intercessors, that's bad. What I didn't think would happen is that my captain in Gravis armor would be a brick house. Oh. He's a brick. Ow. 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 Now the squig boss into these guys. Steve using Armor of Contempt for one command point, still fails, two Hellblasters are dead, but the Librarian lives. You get uh, first fight back. The Captain wipes out the Beast Nagas, but the Beast Boss lives. The Dreadnought clears the center table. I did Overwhelming Force for yeah, five. Yeah. Big, big turn for Steve, an extra eight primary for Kill Kill More. James still gets kill points, so we're 38-49 in James's favor as we head into Steve's turn four. Steve draws investigate signals and cleanse. He's gonna use new orders for his command point for defense stronghold. Ouch! So I score four points on primary. So battle shock on my captain. He's good with a six. He's got Oath of Moment on the Gretchen on the backboard. They do need to die and they have a ton of OC. So this, as odd as it seems, is probably the right choice. 42 to 49 for James as we head to Steve's movement phase. So I have probably one more turn to make all the stars align here. Because if they don't, there's just no way I'm pulling it back. So I need to do a lot of damage this turn without question. So well, then we're gonna go into my shooting phase. I gotta get rid of these Gretchen. I gotta get rid of them. Fast. I gotta remove his ability to score points. The aggressors obliterate those um, Gretchen. How many shots do they have? 3d6 plus six. Hitting on twos? Yeah. Hitting on twos? Yeah, we can pull. Oh, the aggressors have annihilated the Gretchen, but they did stop Steve from scoring eight points. That would have put him in the lead. And do. one kill for Steve's kill tally. They fire uh, both crack missiles from the cyclone at your beast boss. On threes, Hook. two hits. Straight nine on threes. Two wounds, sorry, AP minus two. Terminator's hit with two crack missiles. James spending his only command point on a reroll, and he saves. The Dread is gonna take his Macroplasma Incinerator and go into the Beast Boss, and then all of its other guns into the Gretchen. So into the Beast Boss, D6 plus one, and I don't need to overcharge it, so I won't. Uh, so six, seven shots, hitting on twos. On threes. So five AP minus threes, two damage piece. Oh, I almost survived, Steve. Whoa. One dice. So if I make one six yeah, up, feel no fine. pain, I live. I'm blowing? No. Come on. No, I'm not. I'm right, blowing your dice. Ah, oh, okay. okay He's good. dead. Ooh, the Dreadnought barely manages to kill the Beast Boss. That is really, really big. Two on Steve's kill tally. Then uh, Gatling Cannon into the, into the Gretchen. Ooh, the Gretchen are dead. Does it ice it, the whole thing? Unfortunately, it does not. There's 11 wounds but here. But you're off the objective, though. No, I'm gonna leave one grapple. Oh. And then what's the distance for the charge of the Terminators? 
All they need to do is make this charge on this one little Gretchen standing behind this wall, and then I'm sitting on his objective, too. Terminators need a 10 to reach. They're in with an 11. That's huge. And they're in. Oh, it feels so good on the inside. And you kill Woo. it. I'll just pull it. I get a CP4 ditching. So that's the end of my turn four. Steve has stopped James from scoring defense stronghold by making that ridiculous charge. And as we head into James's turn four, it's 49 to 42 in his favor. I hold two objectives. Only four points primary for James, 53-42 for him. Steve's got two command points, he's got one. I've got defense stronghold and I drew uh, area denial, so I have to go after the center of the table. I'm done moving with my two juicy units. We are gonna go into the shooting phase. D3 shots with thump gun into your librarian. Okay, three shots, gnarly. I missed. They'll throw everything into the Dreadnought. Five. Hit two. Uh, two wounds. These are uh, anti-vehicle one plus. Three ups. I take one. Ten wounds remaining. Sal get weapons. They hit on fours. One wound. Damage. Is there AP? Uh, no. OK. I'm good. Uh, yeah, we'll let off the bomb squeak into him. I roll a two plus, and then you take D3 more wounds. I rolled a one. That's a one, so no. Oh, I forgot to choose pistol. Good enough. Not a lot of much in his movement or shooting phase at all. Get us charged. Here comes the Squig Hog boys with a charge. They're in. Steve's gonna armor of contempt for a command point here for sure. Yeah, I armor of contempt for one command point. I will uh, fight the Dreadnought. James spends his command point on unbridled carnage. Dice, I'm holding my hand or anti-vehicle. Four up. Twos. Command point well spent there. Fours. Yup. I'm gonna have two upstairs, and then it's only one damage. Uh, yep, four. Oh, the Redemptor is taken now to five wounds remaining. And then your librarian dies. Okay, so on threes. So Pretty that well. is five. These are two damage each, too. So four ups. Crazier things have happened. Uh, oh, no, he dies. Dreadnought fights back. Threes. And then on twos. T7. T oh, T7, well, six up. Feel the pain? I feel two pains. That's the end of my turn. Steve has got Killmore again this turn. End that battle round. 50 for Steve and 57 for James. James discards defense stronghold for a command point. Both players have won as we head to the fifth and final turn. Can Steve pull it out? Steve is oath the moment on the Squig Hog boys. An insane bravery is the Redemptor. He's down to one command point, and he's only got three points to catch James. It's 54-57. Love it. Good game, dude. Yeah, it's wild. So I got overwhelming force and storm hostile objective. Gotta go in the middle. Terminators are moving close. Looks like they're gonna need an eight-inch charge. The Dreadnought just cranks everything that can go into the dudes, into the dudes. So it's the Galling Cannon first. James is spending one of his command points on Artist Nails on the Squig Hog boys. Minus one to be wounded. Seven? Five up, feel no pain. Takes, he feels it. And then rocket launcher. No. All the other weapons go into this dude because he's the only other target. D6 plus one shots. No, I'm going to overcharge. Screw it. Three, four shots. Threes? On threes now, yeah. One AP minus three. Feel the pain? All right, sorry, uh, his invul, uh, five up, so he fails. It takes three damage. I failed them all. And then D6 shots. Nothing. Okay. Yeah, okay, I mean, we go to charges, and the Terminators charge, Nate. The charging Terminators fail! Steve's gotta spend his command point to reroll. Steve, come on, Steve. Yeah, there it is. Ten. And then the captain gets in there too. Yep. You don't have the CP to interrupt me either, so. No. James again using Art of Nails in the fight phase. Can Steve clear this objective? Uh, Terminators just go to town. So four attacks from the regular power weapon. So these are hitting on twos because you're my ultimate moment target. Rerolling. Now on sixes. Uh, nothing. Fists. And twos rerolling because you're my ultimate moment target. And Fury the first triggers off. I'm winning you on fours, yeah. Terminators are trying to do it. 
Oh no! What a Steve-like roll! They only kill <laughs> one model! That sucks. Oh, I'm sorry, man. It's okay. It's not funny. Two relic hits off the captain. Twos. He's on sixes now. Nope. And then five shots off his power fist. Sixes. And two damage each. Fives. Kills the guy with a wound. And then the next one takes two. So I get to fight back now. Pump everything into the dread. I need the dread to stay alive. I need to hold on to these primary points. Stick us first. Twos. It's type anti vehicle. Uh, fours, yeah. Five. Trees. Uh, fail one. Take four remaining now. Oh. The bites from the squigs. These are hitting on threes, I believe. Lots of twos in there. Three. Three ups. I failed two. We got two remaining. And then the character. Twos. No explosions. That's a good sign for you. Yeah, that's positive. Four plus. Just two. Three ups. I failed them both, and he dies. Rough. See if it explodes? Yes. It does not explode. Uh, the Redemptor Dread goes down. Oh, wow. So I, the Terminator is taken from you. So I storm hostile. And at turn five, Steve has got 59 to James's 57. This is huge. I think with the death of the Dread, this game is uh, pretty wrapped up. I actually have a very, very strong chance of winning this game. If I draw a good secondary, I win no matter what. I drew Capture Enemy Outpost. Oh, no. James has drawn Capture Enemy Outpost as a secondary, and that is actually going to mathematically eliminate Steve. That's going to win him the game. You fall back, you take the objective from me. You get four on primary. I actually get eight on primary. I have to do the most cowardly move, fall back from combat to Steve's home objective to win the game. It's a sad day for orcs everywhere. What an absolute knockdown, drag out, slobber knocker of a match. 59 to 69 plus paint, 79 69 for your victor in this episode, James, Mr. Initiative Jones. Good game. Good dude. game. Man. Yeah. yeah. James, you've been a fantastic opponent. I have loved playing you in the studio again. All of our games are always wild and wacky and so much fun. Always a blast to play you, buddy. One of my favorite opponents. Great game. This is Space Marine Steve signing off. We always knew the Orcs is the biggest and the best, but this proved it. Says me, Brick Iron Jaw, bringing you the bestest fights inside a Gorks grid. Thanks for that, Brick. Oh boy, what a game. Fantastic match, back and forth, such a nail biter, fitting of these two classic opponents. Thank you, James and Steve, for an absolutely fantastic match. And special thanks to this episode's sponsor, Mantic's Terrain Crate. Terrain Crate is a fantastic product from Mantic. No sprues, just brilliantly designed, ready to paint scenery, super detailed to help bring your greatest battlefields to life. Don't forget, check out the link in the description below and use code PLAYON15 to save 15% off terrain and more at that link. Valid until March of 2024. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please consider supporting us through YouTube membership or Patreon. You'll get exclusive releases as well as behind the scenes interviews, early access to most of our shows and access to our Discord, the most happening 40K community around. That's it for us, folks. On behalf of all of us here at the Play On Studio, this is your host, JT Singh. Until the next time you see us in the far-flung future of a grimdark universe, play on. <laughs>